Monkeypox is a viral infection that has recently gained significant attention due to outbreaks in several countries where it's not typically found. It's a zoonotic disease, meaning it can spread from animals to humans, and it belongs to the same family of viruses as smallpox. Despite its name, monkeypox doesn't primarily come from monkeys. Instead, it's believed to mainly circulate among rodents in parts of Africa. Monkeypox is caused by the monkeypox virus, which belongs to the genus Orthopox virus family. This is the same family that includes the variola virus, which causes smallpox. There are two known genetic clades, or types, of the monkeypox virus. The Central African, also called the Congo Basin, clade, and the West African clade. The Congo Basin clade is generally considered to cause more severe disease. Monkeypox was first discovered in 1958 when outbreaks of a pox-like disease occurred in monkeys kept for research, which is how the disease got its name. The first human case was recorded in 1970 in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Historically, monkeypox has been relatively rare outside of Africa. However, in 2024, there was a significant increase in cases reported in multiple countries outside Africa. This global outbreak has brought monkeypox into the spotlight and raised concerns about its spread. Causes of monkeypox Monkeypox is primarily an animal-borne disease, or zoonotic, meaning it is transmitted from animals to humans. This animal-to-human transmission typically happens through direct contact with the blood, bodily fluids, or skin, or mucosal lesions of infected animals. In Africa, cases have been linked to handling infected monkeys, Gambian giant rats, and squirrels. There's also a risk associated with consuming inadequately cooked meat from infected animals. Once a human is infected, they can potentially spread the virus to others, although human-to-human -human transmission isn't as common or easy as with some other viruses. This type of spread usually requires close contact with respiratory secretions, skin lesions of an infected individual, or objects recently contaminated by patient fluids or lesion materials. While respiratory droplet transmission is possible, it typically necessitates prolonged face-to-face -face contact, making it less common than other forms of transmission. In the case of pregnant women who contract the virus, there's a risk of maternal fetal transmission, where the virus can spread from the mother to the fetus through the placenta. Recent research has suggested that the virus may have evolved to become more efficient at human-to-human -human transmission, potentially explaining the unusual outbreaks in non-endemic countries observed in 2024. Symptoms of monkeypox Once the monkeypox virus enters the body, it begins an incubation period that usually lasts between 7 to 14 days, though it can range from 5 to 21 days. During this period, the virus multiplies within the body without causing any symptoms. After the incubation period, the symptoms typically start to appear in two distinct phases. The first phase, known as the invasion period, usually lasts up to five days. During this time, infected individuals often experience a high fever, with temperatures frequently rising above 38.5 degrees Celsius or 101.3 degrees Fahrenheit. This is accompanied by an intense headache, which many patients describe as debilitating. A unique feature of monkeypox, setting it apart from similar diseases like smallpox or chickenpox, is the swelling of lymph nodes, known as lymphadenopathy. Patients also commonly report severe back pain, muscle aches, and an overwhelming lack of energy. The second phase, the skin eruption phase, typically begins within one to three days after the onset of fever. This phase is characterized by the appearance of a distinctive rash. The rash usually starts on the face before spreading to other parts of the body. However, the highest concentration of lesions is typically found on the face in 95% of cases, palms of the hands, and soles of the feet in 75% of cases. The rash evolves through several stages. It begins as flat, discolored lesions known as macules. These then develop into raised, firm, round lesions called papules. As the disease progresses, these papules fill with clear fluid, becoming vesicles. The vesicles then fill with yellowish fluid, transforming into pustules. Finally, these pustules crust over and fall off as scabs. These skin lesions can be extremely uncomfortable, often described as itchy or painful. In some cases, particularly in children, lesions may appear inside the mouth, 
making eating a challenging and painful process. The number of lesions can vary dramatically from one patient to another, ranging from just a few to thousands. In severe cases, lesions may merge, leading to large sections of skin peeling off. It's important to note that not everyone experiences all these symptoms, and the severity can vary widely. Some individuals may have a very mild case with only a few lesions and minimal discomfort, while others may become severely ill. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Diagnosis of Monkeypox Diagnosing monkeypox involves a combination of clinical assessment and laboratory testing. Your doctor will consider your symptoms, rash appearance, and potential exposure history. However, because monkeypox can resemble other rash illnesses, such as chickenpox, measles, or even some sexually transmitted infections, laboratory testing is crucial for confirmation. The gold standard for monkeypox diagnosis is polymerase chain reaction testing to detect the DNA of the virus in samples taken from the lesions. This is usually done by taking a sample from skin lesions, either by swabbing vesicular or pustular lesions, or by collecting dry crusts. In some cases, blood tests can be used to look for antibodies or viral DNA, but these are less reliable than testing the skin lesions directly. Treatment for monkeypox Treatment for monkeypox is primarily supportive care. This includes managing symptoms, preventing dehydration, and controlling fever and pain. Most people recover from monkeypox without specific treatment within a few weeks. However, for severe cases or for people at high risk of complications, antiviral medications may be considered. One such medication is tecoviramat, also known as Hepox, which was developed for smallpox but has shown effectiveness against other orthopox viruses, including monkeypox. Another antiviral, Prinsidofovir, has also been approved for treating smallpox and may be used for monkeypox in some situations. In addition to these antivirals, vaccinia immune globulin may be used in severe cases. This is an antibody preparation made from the blood of individuals who have been immunized with the smallpox vaccine. Most people with monkeypox recover fully within two to four weeks, especially with the West African strain, which is less severe. However, certain groups, such as young children, pregnant women, and those with weakened immune systems may face a higher risk of complications, including secondary infections, pneumonia, or encephalitis. Prevention of monkeypox. Prevention of monkeypox involves several strategies. Vaccination can also play a role in prevention. The smallpox vaccine has been shown to be about 85% effective in preventing monkeypox. This is because the viruses are closely related and immunity to one provides some protection against the other. In the wake of recent outbreaks, some countries have begun using smallpox vaccines as a preventive measure for people who have been exposed to monkeypox or who are at high risk of exposure. There are also newer vaccines specifically designed for monkeypox. One such vaccine is Invimune, also called Invinex, which has been approved in the United States for the prevention of monkeypox and smallpox. Avoiding contact with animals that could harbor the virus, particularly in areas where monkeypox is endemic, is also very important. This includes avoiding contact with any animals that are sick or that have been found dead in areas where monkeypox occurs. In terms of human-to-human -human transmission, practicing good hand hygiene, wearing personal protective equipment, when caring for patients with confirmed or suspected monkeypox, and isolating infected individuals are key preventive measures. Now, we want to hear from you, do you or someone you know have monkeypox? What symptoms did you have at first? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below, we love to hear them. Thanks for watching.